posted April 27, 2018 13 hours 30 minutes and 52 seconds it was a notable rant, even by 2018 standards. After a week of choreographed statesmanship with French President Emmanuel Macron, Donald Trump boiled over dialing into Fox and Friends in a far-reaching and wild question-and-answer session that perplexed even his closest pals. The U.S. president came out swinging, lashing out at several people, topics, and organizations including CNN, the Department of Justice, James Comey and special counsel Robert Mueller. He was so obviously furious that even the Fox anchors appeared keen to get him off the air. So what impact will Mr. Trump's words have? With the president's personal lawyer Michael Cohen pleading the fifth to avoid self-incrimination over a $130,000 hush money payment to porn star Stormy Daniels, lawyers were quick to work Mr. Trump's comments into their latest filing. And Daniels' attorney was fast to offer thanks. And attacking Mr. Mueller. Well, despite Mr. Trump's rant and threats of moving on the Justice Department, today the Judiciary Committee approved bipartisan legislation to be considered by Congress to protect Mr. Mueller in the event this president, or any other future president, takes steps to remove a special counsel. And as for Dr. Ronnie Jackson, he withdrew as Mr. Trump's nominee to be the next Secretary of Veteran Affairs, despite full-throated support from the president comes after his name was dragged through the mud this week on Capitol Hill, including allegations that he wrecked a government car when drunk and wrote prescriptions for himself and others without adequate patient history. The alleged misconduct by the White House physician allegedly occurred while Dr. Jackson worked for former President Barack Obama. P.O.T.U.S. loves a Sharpie, right? According to NBC News, Dr. Jackson was the 24th Trump administration nominee to be unsuccessful in a Senate confirmable job. Happy birthday Flotus, anyway, that Fox and Friends interview lasted 30 minutes. When asked what he bought his wife for her birthday, Mr. Trump's answer was that he was too busy. Which leads us to the grand spectacle that was the Trump administration hosting the first state visit from a foreign leader, Mr. Macron. Flotus ran a tight ship, putting on what many have described as a flawless state dinner. Shout out to former National Security Council advisor Michael Anton, who left the administration earlier this year with the parting wish to cook a state dinner, the wish was granted. For the record, Lotus was flawless too. Stepping out in a sublime outfit on the main day of the visit, her striking white broad-brim hat stole the day. But once again, Melania's rebukes as Mr. Trump tried to hold hands were on full display. No wonder the US president got so handsy with Mr. Macron. I mean, seriously, what is this all about? While the bromance between the two leaders appeared stronger than ever, Mr. Macron gave an extraordinary joint address to both houses of Congress in which he aired his grievances with Mr. Trump's policies on a number of fronts, from climate change to the Iran deal. He also warned against the rise of nationalism, you can play with fear and anger for a time, but they do not construct anything. Anger only freezes and weakens us, he said. Let's move on to greener pastures this week former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer paid a visit to Madame Tussauds in New York. Hilarity ensued. James Comey's book tour continued and the GOP's Leon Lyon Comey remained in hot pursuit. Mitt Romney was courtside at a basketball game in Utah as his Senate bid in the state picked up steam. There were also changes to the Trump team MR Trump's new Secretary of State has been confirmed. Mike Pompeo has officially replaced Rex Tillerson, although he's been pseudo-doing the job for the past month, including, you know, meeting with Kim Jong-un. Meanwhile, the administrator of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, Scott Pruitt, is still in the firing line as the scandals against the Oklahoman continue to head up. An office security booth, bulletproof furniture and first-class travel are just a few of the eyebrow-raising purchases or attempted purchases at the EPA, according to the New York Times. Supposedly, support for Mr. Pruitt has all but vanished, save for one very key ally, Mr. Trump. Watch this space. In case you missed it, 1. The Supreme Court justices debated whether Mr. Trump's inflammatory remarks on the campaign trail could be used against him in determining the lawfulness of the so-called travel ban. Point 2. A federal judge said DACA, a program designed to protect undocumented children in America, would remain in place and added the Trump administration's decision to terminate it on grounds that it is unlawful, I was, virtually unfounded. Point 3. The Trump administration pulled its nomination of Admiral Harry Harris as U.S. Ambassador to Australia. Instead, he's being redirected to Seoul. Australia has been without an U.S. Ambassador since 2016. There's no real sense of who will now fill the role, or when. Point 4. 
George H.W. Bush is reportedly on the mend after he was hospitalized the day after his wife of 73 years Barbara Bush was laid to rest. His son Jeb says he's as strong as an ox, and according to the official statement, Mr. Bush is more focused on the Houston Rockets and the NBA playoffs than his health. What a tough guy. Get well soon. Point five. Mr. Trump was quick to congratulate Debbie Lesko for her special election win in Arizona this week. A win is a win, but the margin in this district shrank from more than 20 points to single digits, raising alarm bells among the GOP. Hey, speaking of elections, imagine if the votes for nobody won the 2016 election. And imagine if Kanye West ran on a ticket with Donald Trump. I can't even. Is this the best or worst campaign ad of all time? Once seen, never unseen, let's finish today with another classic from our friends at Bad Lip Reading. 4. Mark Zuckerberg. Make a little smile just to show that you can folks. It's 2018 and Elon Musk is building a cyborg dragon. I'm on the road in the magical land of Australia next week, so this newsletter will be taking a week off. Topics, Government and Politics, World Politics, Us Selections, Donald Trump, United States.